Hello and welcome to the Lowe's Motor Speedway here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is time for the Coca-Cola 600, the longest race on the schedule here. 120 laps around this one and a half mile oval. And uh, yeah, we're getting ready to kick things off here. Kevin Harvick is on the pole with Ward Burton to his outside. Behind him is Jerry Nadu in the 01 and the 18 of Bobby Labonte. Getting ready to kick things off here at a pace car. Heading down the back stretch here, we have the full field, 43 cars. And look who else is starting in that top 10. There's a few uh, underdogs up here. My examples being, there's the 37 of Derek Cope, the 0 of Jack Sprack, 57 of Kevin LePage is up here as well. And that's the 66 of Hideo Fukuyama up there as well. Japanese driver making his first start here on the channel and pace car is in we're ready to go green this time bye and here we go green flag is out we're racing here at Charlotte or Lowe's I should say and we do have a new package for these one and a half mile tracks because they did say for one and a half milers, the, that other package we were using was too dangerous. We saw too many bad wrecks um, as a result of the close, tight pack racing. So we will still see closer racing, just not four or five wide each, each and every lap like we did in the past. Three wide further back. These drivers are going to be very aggressive right off the bat here, knowing that they're going to spread out pretty quickly. So we might see Rex as a result of that, actually. Three wide a little bit further back as well. Kenny Wallace on the inside. And look at Michael Walter. He was right in the middle. He finally gets out of that. Further back behind them. A lot of the cars on the outside. Jason Jarrett up in the pack as well here. Derek Cope. Seems to be holding up the rest of the field. This is mainly a one... One and a half groove track, so yeah, I guess it's a good thing that we got this new package because these guys can try to stay in line. Oh man, look at the high side being used here. Bobby Labonte pulling out ahead of Steve Park in that one. Now Casey Atwood hops up to the top. The way this season has gone, I am surprised we haven't had more than just one underdog winner or surprise winner. We got a caution out on the track. And some skid marks there as we see torn up race cars in the back. And oh my goodness, you gotta be kidding me, we're not even five minutes in. We are back, sorry, and just in time, too. We get to see what just happened here. All right, so three wide, it seems. Four wide, actually. Yeah, no, that was not going to work. That was not going to work. And Brian Vickers hard into the outside wall. Chris Mack, I'm not sure what happened to him down there. But he did back out of that. He lifts. Oh, he hit the apron, slid up into Dave Blaney. And as they went into the, into the wall, he got sucked around. Big time damage on Vickers' car. That's, of course, going to take him out of the race. So, five, six cars with damage here right off the bat. It's three laps in. Longer than we lasted at Atlanta. We only made it, like, to the backstretch off of turn two. There was a car going up into the catch fence. So, I guess this is an, appro this is an improvement. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the drop of the green flag after this. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway. We are one to green. 
going to be going green this time by Casey Atwood is currently in the lead in that 91. Hideo Fukuyama in second. And that that's two um, underdog drivers here that you wouldn't expect to be out in front normally. We can see if they can pull it off here today. And one of the two can possibly win this race. It's a little bit early to be talking about winning here. We're only seven laps in. We've got more than 100 to go. And the green flag is back out. We're racing once again here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Kevin Harvick got a great restart. Here comes Hideo Fubiyama on the outside. Peeking to the high side of Casey Atwood here. As we get up to speed, he's not going to make that outside line work quite yet. As Harvick down on the bottle with the push from Kenseth. Going to the front. Matt Kenseth tucked right in behind that 29. The shorter way around is the way to go, but that high side can work as well if you can do it right. And I believe the caution is out once again. Yes, it is. What? So, yeah, the caution is out. And I'm not sure what for. We're going to go back and take a look. I believe it might be the 83 of Kerry Earnhardt once again. It was involved in the first accident. No, it wasn't him. Okay. Maybe it was Chris Mack. I believe I saw a red, white, and blue colored car sitting there on the bottom of the track. Oh, yeah, it was. Ran right into the back of that 32. And that's going to tear his car up even more. Luckily, he didn't get hit by the 83. And Casey Atwood held on to the lead, I believe. Coming to the line. No, Harvick edged him out. So, caution out once again. We'll be back for the drop of the green flag after this. And we are back. Racing here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. In the longest race of the season, and we've already had two cautions. We're only 12 laps in, and by the looks of it, I don't think things are going to slow down any at all here, because look at this. Matt Kenza to the inside of Kevin Harvick for second, and here comes Steve Park looking under his affiliated teammate there. Not exactly teammates, but those teams are pretty similar and now Park moves high Hermie Sattler up into the third place spot Kent have got the outside wall there off of turn two and now Hermie Sattler gonna try to challenge for second on Kevin Harvick further back lots of cars running wide here Jason Jarrett oh my goodness they're checking up Fukuyama into the wall big crash one car up in the air and it looks like some drivers were pitting and didn't let everyone know. And that caused a massive stack up here. Chris Mack is in the grass in that 86. Hideo Fukuyama on turn up. Casey, Casey, yeah, Kerry Earnhardt with heavy damage. And we're going to go back and take a look at what just happened here. What in the world was that? All right, we're going to go on board with Chris Mack here in the 86. He sees it happening. He hops on the brakes. I don't think... Oh, my goodness. I was about to say, I don't think he got any of it. And then he got hit from behind there. Really big impact. Knocked the car up into the air for a second. Got him off the ground for just a split second there. We're going to... Watch it again from this angle, from behind. There's Kerry Earnhardt flying in, trying to get through, and just brushes him. And they, he caught him right on the door. Oh, and it's almost like he just grabbed the fender and ripped it right off of that 83. I'm going to take another look at it here see exactly what happened up so uh, obviously people were coming in the pit road i think i saw elliot sattler's car no that was tony stewart 
getting up into the, almost up into the catch fence further back. So let's take a look at the initial checkup. A couple cars running high, and then this is how it all started. Kenny Wallace, some sort of an issue, trying to get on the pit road, and he does successfully, but checks everyone up behind him on the restart. That's the worst time. He could have pitted under caution there, but he waited for the restart. Something went wrong, and he had to pit. And he goes down to about 140 there in front of the field. And these guys checking up, running over each other, nowhere to go. Bang, there's the 19 hard into the outside wall. Tony Stewart, you saw him get airborne back there. Christian Fittipaldi in the grass getting hit multiple times. There's Dave Blaney, Tony Rain sliding through in the, in the um, white car down on the bottom. I'm gonna take another look at it here. Watch Tony Stewart back there. Oh man, that's a hard hit. Just sandwiched this car into the wall. Really big wreck here on the front stretch, taking out a lot of good race cars. Probably the dumbest wreck of, that I've seen here all season. Gonna go on board with the 20 of Tony Stewart. Sees them checking up. Oh, the 10 slid up right into his path. Nowhere for him to go. And then he gets hit by Dave Blaney. So, um, I'm not even sure what to say about that one. That was just very strange. We're going to go ahead and go to break, and we'll come right back with a drop of the green flag after this. Welcome back to coverage of the MG Cup Series on YouTube here on the Money Games YouTube channel. We are coming back after a pretty, pretty big wreck there. I mean, a decently sized wreck, um, to say the least. That took out a bunch of great cars. Tony Stewart's out of the race. He is not happy at all. Johnny Benton, um, his car is destroyed as well, Dave Blaney's out, but Casey Atwood leads him to the green flag, the green flag is out, Kyle Petty behind him in second, did not get such a great restart, gonna hold everybody up, Jeff Green looking to the inside now, gonna take second from him, and there's Kevin LePage behind both of them, looking at possibly moving up to third. Behind them, that's Hermie Sattler. Heading down the back stretch and into turn three. Sattler gonna... Oh, Kyle Petty did not get a good entry into three there. He's gonna... He had to check up big time. He's gonna lose a bunch of spots. Hermie Sattler coming down the front stretch now. Beautiful flyby there. Hermie Sattler looking to get to the back bumper of Kevin LePage. And maybe get up into third place. Casey Atwood did not get a great exit off of turn two. Here comes Je uh, Jeff Green to his inside. Atwood on the high side in three and four. Trying to hold on to his position. Side by side now for the lead. And this is going to allow Kevin, Pe Kevin LePage to catch up to both of them. Battling side by side like this. It's exactly what that 57 needed. And that allowed him to get right up into the battle. Right in the middle of it, but left between those two. And now looking to the inside, almost took him three wide down the back stretch. Might just push that 30. And he's going to follow him through to the lead now. Had to check up to avoid turning him, and that's going to cost him all of his momentum. But Jeff Green is going to lead that lap. And now here comes Hermie Sattler up into the mix. They're still side by side for second here. Casey Atwood with a massive run around the high side. And he's going to make it work up there. Clears LePage for second. Now here comes Sattler following through in the, in the draft. And 
there's Derek Cope to the inside. Now, Cope is going to take the fourth place away from Hermie Sattler. And Kevin Harvick trying to hold off Jack Sprague. Sprague on his inside is going to possibly get that position. Unless Harvick can do something about it, he's going to get a great run through one, one and two. Sattler checked up big time. Sprague's got a run off of turn two. Going to look to the inside. Harvick falls back. Here comes Steve Park to the inside. Side by side throughout most of the top ten here. As now Jeff Green being hunted down by Casey Atwood. Casey wants to take the lead back from him. And these drivers not really breaking away from each other. But at the same time not bunched up like they were with that old package. This is perfect. And they're actually going for it as well. Thanks to me turning everyone's aggression up to 100. So now, Casey Atwood looking low. Could not get there. The low side. Maybe the slow side, but it's the preferred line around here because nobody can make the high side work. If you can get some grip up there on the outside lane, you can make it work big time. Look at Casey Atwood making it work right there. Perfect example. Look at him go. But the bottom is preferred because that's where the grip is at. Casey Atwood, not afraid to make that high side work. He just did it again right there through three and four and clear Kevin LePage. Here comes Derek Cope to challenge for that third position. Derek Cope in the 37th behind the 57 of LePage. Checks up big time, probably gotten some dirty air. And that's going to allow LePage to actually get a good run off of turn two. And he's going to the inside of Atwood. Atwood did not get a good three or four that time. And he's going to take second place from Casey Atwood. He's got a great run through three or four. That was a really good three or four. And now looking to the inside of Jeff, Jeff Green. He's going to try to take the lead here down the front stretch heading into turn one. Does not quite clear him. Kevin LePage almost had it right there, but Jeff Green dr drives it in deep on the high side. Makes it stick side by side down the back stretch. Now here comes Casey Atwood. Atwood's got a great run. Side by side. Kills their momentum. And now here comes Casey Atwood with a great run through 3 and 4. Checks up to avoid wrecking that 57. Slides up in front of the 30. He's going to take second. Now here comes Kevin Harvick. Where did he come from? And he's going to try to take second. Oh my goodness, action all over the place. Further back, Jason Jarrett having another having another great run. He's in 14th place. He's up inside the top 10, uh, top 15, excuse me, Jeff, uh, Dale Jarrett is, is his uh, father up there as well. He won last week at Richmond. He actually beat his son for that win last week at Richmond. Further back, some damaged cars, and the caution is out for an incident on the front stretch, I believe. Um, we're going to have to go back and take a look and see what just happened here. We're going to look. We're gonna watch the pace car, see when the lights come on. Oh, yep, yeah, it's probably for this right here. Chris Mack with an incident on the front stretch here. We're going to go on board with that 86 to see exactly what happened. So coming off of turn four and he's all by himself here. Oh! Yeah, the, the engine just shut off. Something happened. And around, around he went on the front stretch, has to park it. Looks like his day is done. And that's going to bring an end to this really good green flag run we had. Kevin LePage is your leader in the 57. Jeff Green fell back to fourth somehow in that time. But man, Chris Mack not having the best season so far. Um... Rookie season not going too well. He has done a few races for Papyrus Racing in the past, uh, part time starts, but they, those have all been one offs. This is his first full time season and it's just not going well for him. As mechanical failure takes him out of this race, he was just trying to stay in and get some points. He got some points, 
but just not enough to, uh, not as much as he could have. Anyway, coming around to the restart now, Kevin LePage is still your leader after the pit stops and the caution. Every caution, these guys like the pit. And, uh, I'm after. I'll be right back, so we'll have to, uh, go to, uh, quick crank it up here on Fox. So, Dale Jarrett has worked his way up into the top five, and he's right behind Jack Sprague. Pushes Sprague, and he's going to go to the inside. And now they're side by side for second down the front stretch and into turn one here. And Jack Sprague clears Casey Atwood. Can Dale Jarrett do the same? No, he cannot. He's going to have help, though. Kyle Petty goes up behind him. That slight bit of draft actually helped both of them somehow. But now Atwood on the high side holding off Kyle Petty. He's been using that high side pretty well all race here. They're side by side down the front stretch and into turn one once again. And now look at that run through one and two, at least on entry. Does not get a good exit though. Tire wear may be becoming a factor here. They're side by side further back. Michael Waltrip and Tony Raines, who actually was involved in the wreck earlier. That big piling up that happened on the front stretch. He was involved in it. He's running pretty well, even with that rear end damage. But here comes Bobby Labonte on his tip. Are you kidding me? <sighs> All right. Um, anyway, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, so Tony Reigns up in the, the top 20 here. With no back end on that car after that wreck that happened earlier today. Or tonight, I should say. And uh, he's actually trying to get more positions here. He's got Terry Labonte in front of him. 
Bobby Labonte was back there battling Tony Reigns a few laps ago when uh, when I was last here. He's now looking up, looking up underneath Kurt Busch here, trying to get into the top ten. Wait, is he lapped? Yeah, he's lapped. I'm sorry. Bobby Labonte a lap down on a tear here as he moves his way up through the field. So, um, next season, um, la uh, double file restarts will be on and lap cars will pull up to the inside on these restarts. That should eliminate any confusion um, and hopefully not ruin the races, even though I'm pretty sure it will. But it should at, le it should at least eliminate all confusion um, in the future. As far as who's on the lead lap and who's a lap down, stuff like that. Jeff Green fell out of the top 10, battling his way back up now underneath Jason Jarrett. And Kurt Busch trying to get underneath J Jarrett now. Pretty small pack of cars here. We're going to take a... Oh, side by side now for the lead. Dale Jarrett takes it. And we're going to take a break here. We'll be back in a couple of laps after this quick break. Welcome back to the MG Cup Series here on Fox and FS1. Um, really on the Money Games YouTube channel, but uh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Dale Jarrett took the lead and just ran away with it. He puts Boris Sed a lap down. Boris Sed in the 67 just trying to finish this thing. He has no hood on that car. He was involved in that wreck earlier today. The first wreck, I believe, not the pileup. But um, Jack Sprague going to have a tough time passing him with that 67 down on his door like that. I think these guys are just praying for a caution at this point because they need those fresh tires to get back up there. Dale Jarrett, really good on these long runs, it seems. He won last week at Richmond and had a really fast car. And now he's going to just absolutely run away with it here at Charlotte. So, Warren tires aren't really a problem for him, it seems. But now side by side for second, or at least they were for a second. Um, but Jack Sprague pulls out ahead of Kevin LePage. And look at Kyle Petty in the 45 back there as well. Trying to make things happen. He's having a really good day here today. Steve Park in the one after being injured earlier in the season at Atlanta and out for a bunch of races. He is back up inside the top five. I know this isn't his first race back, but just we haven't talked about him much ever since he came back. And this is a really good run for him today. This is something to talk about for sure. Bobby Labonte. Trying to get his lap back. Look at him. He was flying through the field. And now he's gotten his way up inside the top. Uh, between the top 10 cars. Looking at the leaderboard here. He is in... Uh, let's see. 18. So he is one lap down in 33rd place. Boris said is actually for position for him, so he's going to take that spot pretty easily here on the inside of that 67. Boris tries to hold on to it, sends it in on the high side, but cannot make it work even with that that um, with that engine damage slowing them down. Bobby Labonte on a tear here, trying to work his way back up through the pack and back onto the lead lap. If we had double file restart, he probably would have. He probably would have been back on the lead lap all right by now, faster than a lot of these cars, even faster than Dale Jarrett, I believe. Best lap was a twenty nine point five. Jarrett's is a twenty nine point five as well. So they're pretty much the. They pretty much got the same cars, or not the same cars, but the same speed here. Dale Jarrett has a lot of speed on the long run, though. So. Um, this will be interesting to see how it plays out. Harvick trying to get by that 18. 
by Labonte not letting it happen too easily. And there's Jeff Burton coming out of pit road with a lot of damage to that car. And Labonte gets stuck behind him somehow. No, he's coming down the pit. I'm sorry. So green flag pit stops are underway here. Neo Fukuyama's on pit road as well as a few of the lap down cars. Bobby Labonte. Now we're getting more people in here. Where's the leader? Where's Dale Jarrett? Here he is off of turn four and he is coming down now. He is coming down this time. Headed in the pit road, so is Kyle Petty. A couple of the other guys stayed out. And Jack Sprag and Kevin LePage heading down pit road now. Lots of cars further back. Trying to get into the pits. All of these guys heading down on down the pit road right now. Dale Jarrett exiting the pits right now. On the apron and one and two now down the back stretch gonna merge up onto the racetrack. Bobby Labonte, full head of steam here, already made his pit stop. He's just trying to get that lap back. But off of turn four, Dale Jarrett way out ahead. So if Labonte wants his lap back, he's gonna have some work to do big time here. We still got cars leaving pit road, so we might have some issues with traffic on the pit exit. Kurt Busch underneath Jeff Gordon. They're side by side through one and two. Jeff Gordon about got up in the uh, about got up into that outside wall. He almost did. Luckily he didn't. And these lap cars or slower cars, I should say, getting back up to speed as they come out of came out of pit road might be an issue. Got a pretty good sized pack. Kurt Busch was up in the top ten earlier. Trying to get back up there now on these fresh tires underneath Terry Labonte and Robbie Gordon. And that's Larry Foyt in the 14. He's up in 11th place trying to get up, get up into the top 10. So really good run for him and that 14 team as well. Side by side down the front stretch and heading into turn 1 once again. Kevin Harvick and Jeff Green side by side. Green takes the position. Harvick's going to fall back. He's going to have a really good run down the back stretch here. Looking now to the inside of that 30. Backs out of it before he can get there. Man, the draft really does play a really big factor here at Tal like it does at Talladega and Daytona. But this is Lowe's Motor Speedway. So, this package. A mix of uh, driving, skill, and talent, and uh, working the draft as well. <clears throat> Here comes Kurt Busch with a run through three and four. Possibly going to get to Harvick's bumper here. I'm not sure he's going to get to his uh, up alongside of him, but he, he is going to get to his bumper. Meanwhile, out in front, Dale Jarrett, kicking butt and taking names here today. Three-second lead over second place, Kyle Petty. Further back, side-by-side, side, Jason Jarrett takes the position from Casey Atwood. Atwood has a run off the of two, though. Looking back to the inside, going to try to cross him over here down the back stretch. Side by side in the three and four. Jason Jarrett going to make the high side work. But Atwood keeps it in there. Going to try to make it work down there on the bottom. 
<coughs> Almost dead. Bobby Labonte does not want a caution to come out. He wants to get up ahead of. Actually, he does want a caution to come out, but he wants to pass a couple of these guys before. Kurt Busch and Jeff Green side by side. Now Bush looking to get up in the eighth place with this pass. Jeff Green drives it in very hard on the high side and he makes it stick. Got a great run off of turn two, turn four there on the front stretch. He's opened up about a second, uh, half a second over Kurt Busch, just like that. <clears throat> so three seconds um, is the difference between first and second. And then another three seconds between second and third. And then third, fourth, and fifth are pretty much all under a blanket here. Never mind, right as I say that, scoring updates and they're a, a second apart. So third and fourth are a second apart now. Then fourth and fifth battling with each other. Steve Park and Kevin LePage side by side trying to make moves on each other heading into three. And then it's another three seconds. Almost four seconds separating fifth and sixth. And now they're right there on each other's bumpers. Sixth and seventh side by side now. That's Casey Atwill looking at the inside of Jason Jarrett. And then there's another five seconds between them and Jeff Green and Larry Foyt battling for. 8th place here. So this race has gotten pretty spread out. But it's still very entertaining to say the least. Good racing and entertainment all rolled into one. This is how NASCAR should be, but just let me not say that. Because <laughs> um, I know all the, uh, all the fans complain about all the, a lot of people I hear complain about the racing. I honestly don't think it's that bad, other than the dirty air part. Um, that needs to be fixed. But a lot of people I'm hearing are just mad because they're not they're not getting their photo finishes and eight wide racing every race, and um, that's why it's a quote unquote boring race. But this is how it should be. It's just Drivers going at it, and people should be happy about it. So, I I guess I cleared things up there, <laughs> but we're 72 laps in. We still got a couple laps to go. This is a 120 lap race. This is once again the longest race of the season, 600 miles here. As Elliot Stadler's on the back bumper of War Burton. And Derek Hope behind the both of them. He's got to run down a back stretch. He's looking to the inside of Sadler here. Does not have any help. Trying to keep his nose in there. He couldn't. Meanwhile up here. Kurt Busch, not letting that 30 out of his sights quite yet, trying to run him back down. He's going to use the draft to try to reel him in here. Off of turn four, trying, trying his hardest to catch that 30, and he's doing so as well, heading down into turn one. Robbie Gordon behind those two. In case they do get side by side, he can get up there and challenge them as well. And knowing Robbie, he probably will. And then there's Matt Kenseth behind Gordon. Now Kenseth has a lot of momentum here. Let's see what he's going to do, but he's going to go to the inside. And now side by side in the one, Gordon did not get the grip. And there was contact behind them, I'm pretty sure. We're going to go back and take a quick look at that. That got very close. Yeah, Larry Foyt drove it in, and Ken and uh, Ryan Newman did 
not exactly give them that space. Catch back up with the live feed. And Ken's uh, side by side with his teammate now. And that is Kurt Bush on the outside trying to make things work. Matt Kenseth and Brett Bodine. Or, excuse me, Matt Kenseth and Kurt Bush. And they're trying to work their way around Brett Bodine. And that 11. And they do so pretty well here. No, Bodine actually slowed the progress at that 97 a little bit. So now here comes Ryan Newman. Here comes Robbie Gordon. Here comes everybody behind them. Newman on the bumper at 97. Gonna have to let off to avoid turning him. Kurt Busch is the last guy you want to turn. Knowing his attitude and his quick temper. But, um, that was me hitting my hand on my computer, by the way. I'm sorry if you heard that, but that hurt a little bit. Meanwhile, up here, Christian Fittipaldi. They're gonna get a spot over Terry Labonte in front of some of the leaders here. And that is Steve Park and Kevin LePage. They're battling for four. And having to work through these lap cars as well. That's the 09 of Buckshot Jones. Ahead of them as well. Kyle Petty. Just pretty much by himself. And then there's Dale Jarrett. Just in the... A whole other, a whole other zip code. Compared to these other guys. Oh, and Jeff Burton seems to have blown it up, and he's going to come to a stop here on the apron, on the back stretch. I don't believe that's going to be a caution. No, it isn't. He gets that toe back to pit road, and he's already out of the way. So that's nothing to worry about here. Sucks for that 99 team. Here comes Jason Jarrett to the inside of Terry Labonte. He's just kind of letting people by here. There's Bobby Labonte going by as well. And now the Labonte brothers side by side. Terry not letting Bobby by that easily. But nope, it isn't for position. So he had to go on ahead and let him by. Buckshot Jones is uh, lapped down, so this is for position for Bobby Labonte. So Bobby, as long as this stays green and people keep getting lapped, he can just go on ahead and get these spots because he does not have really any damage on that car. And he just needs to rely on these slower cars with damage to get lapped so he can go ahead and pass them and have a count for position. So he's getting some pretty good points out of this, rather than just giving up. Lap 83 here at Lowe's. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Green flag pit stops are underway. Jack Sprague has uh, already made a stop. Jason Jarrett pulling out of pit road right now. Back out onto the track. Um, Casey Atwood and Steve Park coming in the pit road. Oh! Michael Waltrip is done. So we've had some trouble here during green flag pit stops. And the caution is going to come out. And we're going to take a look at what just happened here. I believe I saw Kurt Busch sideways. Look at Larry Foyt. What in the world is he doing? Oh, got up into the back of Kurt Busch. I don't think he was trying to pit. Kurt Busch was, and he just spun him out. Oh, nowhere to go. Then there goes Mikey. And then up and over is that 15. Jeff Gordon just punted him there. Wow. Man, talk about a wild wreck. A very strange one as well. So that's what brought out the caution here. With just 30 laps to go. 
And uh, we'll take another break. We'll be right back after this. And the green flag is back out. Ward Burton in front of the field, but he is not the leader. He's a lap down. The leader, not Robbie Gordon, not Jimmy Spencer, not any of these guys, is actually Jeff. Je yeah, I keep wanting to say Jeff Jarrett. It's ain't WWE. It's Jason Jarrett in the 98. And look at Ryan Newman moving up in the second here. He's got these guys have to deal with all kinds of lap traffic here. Jimmy Spencer up first. See how they're gonna get by him. He's just gonna peek to the inside and take the spot from him. All right, not too difficult. Ryan Newman about turned him. Ward Burton driving his hardest, trying to get away from these guys back here. He does not want to fall the lap down. But here comes Jason Jarrett alongside of Robbie Gordon. Robbie drives it in deep. Jason checks up. Steve Park in the one. Trying to use that draft. Here comes Ryan Newman to the inside of that seven. Not being very patient with these lap cars today. He's going to just take that um, inside line and drive it in. Now looking to chase down that 98 of Jason Jerry. Let's see if Jason Jarrett can pull off an upset here today. And look who's in third. Jason Jarrett's father, Dale, who won last week at Richmond. Let's see if he can go back to back here this week. Is now looking at three wide down the back stretch. Dale Jarrett did not have the speed to do it. He's all over the back bumper of Ryan Newman now. Backs off to avoid turning him. Robbie Gordon just not letting these leaders spy at all here. That's very Robbie Gordon-like, I'm not even going to lie. And once again, dro drove it in pretty deep. Couldn't get it to stick up there on the high side that time, but he's going to have the push from behind. No, Newman goes to the inside. Going to try to keep them side by side. Jason Jarrett slid up, almost got up and off of that. Almost got into that 31. And that could have been bad. Side by side still. If you do miss our old package, don't worry because we'll we'll see that package at Michigan in just a couple of weeks here. And it will be flat out. It is a tribute to the package I used in the demo of this game. Back when I was in China and I didn't know how to actually get the full version. So, if it goes bad, we'll probably have to change it. So, yeah, but hope you guys are excited for that. As excited for that as I am. Um, next week is actually Pocono. So, two super speedways coming up here in the near future. And Ward Burton, still out in front. Caution, where to come out now. Ryan Newman, way high. Not sure what he's doing. He's looking for more uh, grip, I guess. Trying to make different lines work. And he makes, it high, he makes the high side work this time by. But, man, I'm not sure what he was doing up there. He was way up in the, in the marbles. Lucky to not lose that second place spot. Dale Jarrett driving his hardest. Just trying to keep Ryan Newman back there with him. So if he doesn't win, at least his son can get his first win here today. Those Robert Yates racing teammates and father and son having each other's backs here today. And here comes Dale Jarrett to that inside. Newman did not get the grip on the high side. And he's going to take that spot. Jason Jarrett being held up by Robbie Gordon still. Just learning who Robbie Gordon is here today. And he once again has to let him to check up there on the on the bottom and let him buy. Robbie not backing out of it. Here comes Dale Jarrett to, a, to the inside of Jason trying to take the spot away from his son. Side by side through three and four. 
and they're still side by side. Who's going to lead this lap? A Jarrett will for sure. That's Dale Jarrett leading the lap that time as he takes it from his son once again. And now lap cars are side by side in front of the leaders. This is not going to end well. Robbie Gordon to the inside of Ward Burton. Still side by side. Gordon clears him, and Dale Jarrett going to try to follow him through. Side by side now down the front stretch with the lap cars. Dale Jarrett trying to put Ward Burton the lap down. Ward not letting it happen too easily, as he knows if a caution were to come out now, um, even if they did have the rule of lap cars pulling up to the inside he still wouldn't be able to get his spot back so he does not want to lose that spot either way just wants to stay on the lead lap and he's hoping for a caution he's not gonna doesn't seem he's gonna get that caution but they finally got by him now they still have to deal with robbie robbie gordon not gonna make it easy at all Mark Burton falls back up on the high side, just letting people by at this point. Might have used up all his stuff. Jason Jarrett and Dale Jarrett, one, two. The Jarrett, father and son, trying to make it happen. Here at Lowe's. J Jason has a run through one and or through three and four. Now heading down into one and two. They're going to be side by side once again. And Dale has to let him by. I'm not going to race him too hard. But probably saving up his stuff here. We know he's pretty good with that tire management as he won Richmond by being way faster than the rest of the pack on old tires. So we're gonna we're gonna have to see how that goes. Jason Jarrett through three and four in the draft of Robbie Gordon trying to keep his position. J Dale Jarrett has a really big run side by side with the Jarretts one and once again through one and two. And here's Ryan Newman up into the mix of that as well. Three cars under a blanket, racing for the lead here at, at Lowe's Motor Speedway, trying to win the longest race in the season. <clears throat> Ryan Newman's going to fall back, and there's Ward Burton to his inside. Newman needs to stay ahead of that 22 if he wants the shot. He wants to still have a shot at the win. And he also better hope that Robbie Gordon plays another factor in this. Jason Jarrett trying the high side. What in the world is he doing? The caution is out. That's what he's doing. And Christian Fittipaldi has wrecked. And he's got roof damage. So something must have happened here. Oh, he cleared himself on Kenny Wallace. Up into the wall. And on onto the wall. And rolls over. That's another car getting upside down here today. And he got hit big time. It's Hideo Fukuyama. Oh. And another hit from... Boris said, Kurt Busch caught up in it as well here. What in the world happened here? Oh, they were trying to check up. Kurt, I don't think he had brakes at that point. I really don't know what to say about all, about all that. Robbie Gordon. Uh, pits are closed, Robbie. What is he doing? Pulls it into pit road. Okay, then. So we'll be back after this quick break for this run to the checkered flag here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. 600 miles. They've all come down to this. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Things are about to get crazy here at the end. Pace car is off. We're ready to go green once again here. Jason Jarrett in the lead. His father, Dale Jarrett, in second. Green flag is out. We're racing once again at Charlotte Mo or at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Ryan Newman looking to the outside, trying to make something happen here on the restart. Has to get back in line. Steve Park behind him. Side by side through one and two. Jason Jarrett pulls way out ahead. Dale Jarrett could not hold on to the second place there as Ryan Newman just rocketed by. Guess that's why them guess what? Guess that's why they call him the Rocket Man. He just flew by him. 
Now out of turn four, Dale Jarrett has a good run off of the high side, side by side now. Dale Jarrett just wants his son to win this race at this point. He's trying everything he can to keep Newman behind him. And Ryan Newman up on the high side once again. Oh, pretty close to the outside wall. He seems like he's going to make it stick. Dale Jarrett nosing out ahead. Newman's not giving up here on the high side. Still side by side. Jack Sprague up in the mix in the zero car. And there's Matt Kenseth as well. Five cars really with a shot to win this thing. All right there. The entire top five. Right there. Steve Park holding up the rest of the field behind him. And there's Jimmy Spencer coming out of pit road down the back stretch here. Right in front of Kyle Petty. And oh boy, things are going to get tight. Things are going to get tight here. Look out, boys. All right, they they managed to survive. Jimmy Spencer, not sure what he's doing. Three wide now down the front stretch. This is going to get even tighter. Elliot Sattler's in the middle. Contact with Steve Park and Elliot Sattler. Things are getting crazy. You can tell we're thin. Meanwhile, and I'm sorry if you hear the, uh... <clears throat> the what's going on in the background here. I guess I'll mute. All right. Couple of laps to go. Matt Kenseth got by Dale Jarrett here. Jack Sprague looking to challenge Ryan Newman for second. Newman looking to get to Jason Jarrett for the lead here. As we come through one and two, Jason Jarrett, Cinderella story, can he pull it off? Oh, he's slow through one and two. That's not what he needed. Here comes Newman, side by side. Jack Sprague pushing him. Newman had to back off there. Jarrett on the high side, making it work. Drive it, drives it in deep. Trying to hang on with everything he has here. Two laps to go here at Charlotte. The Coca-Cola 600 here at Lowe's Motor Speedway has all come down to this. Newman rockets by Sprague on the high side. It's going to have a good run through one and two. Now down the back stretch, peaks to the inside one more time. Can he make it work this time? Jason Jarrett. Side by side, they're still, he's trying to hold on to it. No, Newman takes it from him. Ryan Newman, who won at Rockingham earlier this season, is going to come through to take the white flag here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. One more time around here in Charlotte, North Carolina, for the Coca-Cola 600. Does Jason Jarrett have anything left for Ryan Newman, or did he use up all his stuff? Dale Jarrett's got to be heartbroken right now behind him. But not as heartbroken as Jason Jarrett is. Through three and four. Newman. Getting up into the grippy stuff. One last time off of turn four. And Ryan Newman wins the Coca-Cola 600. Here at EMG Cup Series. How about that finish? How about that? What a finish for Ryan Newman. Heartbreak for Jason Jarrett. That's going to do it for this one. Hope, hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, hit that like button, subscribe. Hope to see you guys next time. Till then.